So after a very smooth loading of the GUI, which worked for everyone straight away, we're going to start the GUI tutorial. And uh, if is there anyone who doesn't have a working GUI in front of them? OK, fantastic. OK, so what we're going to do is build a very simple network model, um, step by step. The idea is that we all do it together. However, if you get lost, I just uploaded the slides that I was using. Um, and at the end of those slides, you will see, I can show it here, uh, slide 51. You have this net language tutorial one. And it shows kind of step by step what we're going to do. So it has like an arrow, clicking on cell, ball and stick, blah, blah. So you can, if you get lost, you can go to these slides and do it. You can also just let me know and ask me, hey, what do I have to do now? And of course, the video is going to be recorded. So you can also do it afterwards at your own pace. So let's go to the GUI. OK, so the first thing we want to do is create a new cell type. So we're going to go to this tab that we're in, which is the first one, cell types. And we're going to click on the plus to create a new cell type. And here it's going to ask us for the type of cell type we want to create, either an empty cell where we're going to fill in everything, uh, a basic hodgkin Huxley cell, which is essentially a cell with a soma and a hodgkin Huxley mechanism, and the ball and stick cell which is the one we're going to choose. And that one has a soma and a dendrite. These are just a couple of examples that we built into the GUI to make it easier to start with. Uh, you can see that you can also import a cell template from a file. And we will show examples of loading really complicated cells with hundreds of compartments and many channels. But for now, please click on ball and stick Hodgkin Huxley cell. So Sorry, just to yes. be clear, the basic yes. HH cell is a point in your room, right? No, it's a cell with a single compartment and a Hodgkin Huxley mechanism. The point okay, nearest usually are not uh, Hodgkin Huxley. They are like ECK or okay. integrated fire and so on. Okay. Yeah, but but it's uh, without geometry at all, just the the basic soma structure. It does have geometry, but it's just a simple sum with a okay, diameter and a length, like a rounded, yeah. Thank you. And well, we will see now how this one looks. So if you click in ball and stick HH cell, you will see this new cell type is created here. If you want to delete it, you can click on delete. If you select it by clicking on it, you will see that on the right-hand side, you get a new panel that has the name of the cell type. And we're going to rename this and call it a uh, peer or pyramidal, a very simple pyramid. Okay. And then what we can do is add a new section, or we can already explore the sections it has. So if you see here in this sort of navigation panel that we have at the top, uh, yeah, so this is a new feature uh, where you can expand and collapse this navigation panel, and you can essentially see the underlying NetPine Python structure that represents what we're seeing. So we are inside this object called NetParams. Uh, we're inside the cell param structure, and we're inside the pyramidal cell. Type. But you don't need to worry about this. You can just collapse. And what we want to do is see the sections inside this cell type that we just created. So we're going to click on section on these three little dots. And now we move on to the sections uh, component or panel. And so we see that we have two sections, the soma and the dendrite. Okay, So if we click on each one, we can switch from soma to dendrite. And what we can do is go into the right, we can see the geometry of these sections. So we can see that the soma has a geometry, which is a diameter of 12, length of 12 micrometers, Axial resistance 100, membrane capacitance 1. Okay. Uh, we can also see the topology for the SOMA. There's no topology because it's not really connected to anything. It's 
the dendrite, if we click on the dendrite, that's the section that is actually connected to the soma. And underneath topology, we can see that. The parent section of the dendrite is the soma. Uh, the location, connect location, is for the parent is one. And here it should say zero, actually. That is a small bug, but it should work anyway. You can type the zero, you can leave it like that. It should still work. Um, you can go to the geometry and you will see that the dendrite is a thin, long cable, one micrometer, and length 200 micrometers. Again, axial resistance 100 and one uh, for capacitance. Okay, so what else can we do here? So we can again go to any of the sections and click on the mechanisms inside, explore mechanisms inside this section. Then click there and we will see that inside the cell type uh, and well, inside the cell type and the section that we are in, we have this Hodgkin Huxley mechanism. Okay, and on the right hand side, you will see the parameters of uh, DHH, the GNA bar, the GK bar, GL, and EL, the reverse potential, the leak conductance, and so on. Okay, if we go back to sections, we can then click on dendrite and select mechanisms, and we will see that this one has a passive mechanism. We have a conductance and a reverse potential. So this is essentially, as you can see, what we have done already in neuron, but right now we are seeing the same thing on a graphically. Okay, so next step. Any questions about this? So if you go into one of the mechanisms, if you click on this collapse expand, you can see uh, the whole structure, the net fine structure that contains this information, which is useful to start familiarizing. So you see you have inside the cell parameters, the pyramidal cell type, inside the sections, the soma, and the HH mechanism. Okay, so let, next step, let's go to populations. You can either click on the tab here at the top, populations, or on the left-hand side panel, populations. And now let's create a new population. So again, similar as before, you see the new circle representing the population, and we have here the first field is the name of the population. So we're going to rename this, and we're going to call it E for excitatory. All very simple. And we're going to say, uh, here we're going to select from the drop down menu the cell type of this population. We only have one in the list because we just defined one, which is the pyramidal. So we select that one. And here we're going to specify how many cells. So notice that the first field here says dimension type. And you can select between number of cells, density. So you can define the density of cells instead of directly a number or grid spacing, which is another feature in NetPoint where you can space cells equidistantly. But for now, we're just gonna use the standard number of cells, and we're gonna select 40, four zero. Okay, so now we have a population with 40 cells of type pyramidal. Uh, doo -doo -doo. And I think we can just now straight away go to create network. So right now we don't have any stimulation, we don't have anything exciting, but we can already see a network of 40 cells. So if you click on create network, you should get something like this. Did anyone get an error or some issue? You can post it on Slack and one of the tutors can help you if you want to mention it now here. Okay, so things you can do here. Uh, this is a really nice 3D uh, visualizer. So you have some of the controls here in the top left. You can move to the right, to the left, up and down. You can rotate in different directions. Okay, and you can also do all these things. Oh, you can zoom in and zoom out. And you can do all these things with your mouse or trackpads. I only know how it works on a Mac trackpad. 
Uh, so the two fingers in and out for zooming. Um, the dragging is to rotate in different directions. And if you click with two fingers, you can translate, move it around. Okay. So essentially what we're seeing here is the 40 cells, and you see the SOMA compartments and the long thin dendrites, okay, which is what we defined. So what else can we do here? We have a nice feature to define the colors of the different cells. I see some questions. Let me check. Got it. Okay. Uh, so in this little icon here at the bottom, you can click and you can see the list of cells in the network. Okay. So you have like a top level a structure, which is the network. Inside the network, you have the E population, and then you have each of the cells of the E population, which is of type pyramidal. Yeah, 40 of those. So you can change the colors or of each one, and you can also hide and show each of these components. Can we support, import a Python script to the GUI? Yes, you can. So in the file menu, you can say import, and you can import from Python or from JSON. And we'll see an example of that. So here, you can, in this icon, you can hide the whole population, for example or you can hide individual cells. You see that one of those pops up and so you can, for example, hide all of them and then only show one of them. If you wanted to know where that particular cell is located. Uh, you can show all of them again, okay? And you can change the color of individual cells. So you can choose this one, for example, and I want this one to be of a different color, yellow. Okay. And what you can do, which is quick and easy to see very clearly the different cells, is click on this random button, which assigns random colors to all the cells. At the top, the two arrows, random color. And so now you get all of the different cells in different colors, so it's easier to visualize. Okay. Uh, any questions? When we have two different populations, we can uh, set a color for uh, each of them and in the we. Yes, exactly. So here you see that we only have one population, network E, and you can set the color of this one, which will set for all of them the same one. So if you had two different ones, you could do that for each separately. OK, perfect. Thank you. OK. So this is all very nice, but right now we cannot do really much. So here on the left hand side, the sidebar now has changed to show the different plots available. And right now, because we haven't actually run a simulation, we only have three plots. Uh, something called the 3D representation, which we can click and see. Uh, oh, sorry, 3D representation is what we're seeing, of course. <laughs> the connections plot, which is a connectivity, simple connectivity matrix, which right now shouldn't show anything because we don't have connections. And something called the 2D net, 2D net plot, which shows a 2D view of the network with the cell locations in uh, X and Y space. When, we, when you actually have connections, you will see little lines popping up. Were these OK, so let's. I yes. have a question. Were these cells placed randomly in space currently, or is there like a default pattern? In other words, are all of us looking with these 40 cells like the same places individually? You should have all the same locations, yes, I believe, because it's random but deterministic, so you can reproduce simulations. Okay. So you can change you can change the random seed for different things. You can change the random seed for the locations and the random seed for the inputs for the spike times that are provided as inputs. For um, sorry, Salvador, it's a rather yes. simple question, but how can I un undo something, like the colors or, or something that I done, but I want to undo you, it? What did you do, Sebas? <laughs> um, there's no, no real... No, no, it's not. I mean, it's just changing the colors, you know? <laughs> because I don't yeah, like there's this. No real... 
but there's no real undo button but you can just go to the color thing and select a common color for all of them so if you go to the network at the top okay, and select okay, okay. red they will all turn red and then you can play around again okay Uh, okay. Also, so let me ask: uh, yes. can, can can we define uh, the coordinates of each of uh, these forty parameter cells as we want? Yes. Yes. So there is okay. an option where you specify what we call a list of cell properties, and you can give x y coordinates for each of them. Um, okay. Thank you. Okay. So let's go back to edit here at the top right and add some more interesting features. Um, so let's make uh, something uh, that allows the network to generate some spikes. So we're going to go on to, uh, I think what we did here is, let's add a synaptic mechanism because that's the next in the list here. So we can just add an excitatory synapse. So I'm going to click on create new synapse and I can call it X. Or excitatory and save that I'm gonna use the X to sim mod file. We could select just the X sim, but by default we're gonna use X to sim and we're gonna use the values 0 0.1 milliseconds for the rise time and 1.0 for the fall time and a reversal potential of zero. We want it to be excitatory. Okay, so now we have a, a synapse that we can use in our network. So remember, this is sort of the post-synaptic cell side of the synapse that we were talking about yesterday. And now let's create a connectivity rule. So our first connectivity rule, we're going to click on the plus, create new connectivity rule, and we're going to call this E, arrow E, E to E. So it's just going to be like a recurrent connectivity of all the cells in the network. You can call it whatever you want. This is just an arbitrary name. Uh, so you can call it John, and it will still work, just for reference. So uh, we are going to have to set some of the parameters of this connection, and I'm going to give you the values. And uh, the weight or the strength is going to be 0 0.005. We're going to use a probability of connection, so which means we only want a percentage of the cells to connect to each other. Uh, so we're going to set a probability of 0 0.1. So 10% of the cells are going to connect randomly to each other. Uh, we're using probability so that we don't want to fill the convergence and divergence values. For the delay, we're going to use a delay of 5 milliseconds. And the synaptic mechanism that we want to use is the excitatory so we select it from the list notice how we defined before the synapse and we can use it here okay and we want to connect to the dendrites of the sections so remember we can make connections to specific sections of the cells so here we're going to click uh, on the plus i think sorry no we first type the name of the section that we want to connect then so if we remember, we call the section SOMA and then, and then we click on the plus. This is like a list because you can connect potentially to multiple sections. So that's why it's set up this way. But essentially, again, just type then and then click plus. And that should get added to the list like this. And we can add the location. Where we want to connect, we, we say 0 0.5. So it's at the 0 0.5 location of the dendron. Okay. And we just want to have one synaptic contact. So again, uh, weight 0 0.005, probability of connection, of connection 0 0.1, delay 5 milliseconds, excitatory mechanism. And we connect to the dendrite at location 0 0.5. So now, how are we going to tell NetPine what cells we want to connect to each other? OK, so here's where it comes what we call the conditions of the presynaptic cells and the conditions of the postsynaptic cells. So which cells do we want to connect presynaptically? And here we have a set of 
uh, properties of the cells that we can select. So for example, we could say we want to connect all cells from a specific population, which is, in our case, what we want to do. We want to connect all cells from the E population. Let's say this select that. OK. So you just click it once, and you see now it's uh, the E population is selected. But potentially, you might want to connect all cells of a specific cell type. If you have pyramidal cells in multiple populations, that might be the rule that you want to use. Or you might want to connect all cells within a specific Y range. The Y coordinate here represents the depth, the cortical depth, for example. And so you might want to say all cells within 500 and 600 micrometers, because you have some experimental data showing that. In our case, um, we are going to stick with the E population. And we move on to the conditions of the postsynaptic cells. And we are going to select the same thing, the E population. So we're going to connect from E to E. Very simple rule to start with. Excuse me. I click at uh, the cell type, uh, mm -hmm. presynaptic cells, and it's selected now. Uh, so if you want to deselect, so say that I click here on peer, then it turns pink red. And if I go away, it's there. But if you want to deselect it, you guys go on top of it and click on it again. And it will go white. So it's no longer selected. And if you click outside of the box, you should see it empty. Thank you. OK, any questions? OK, so what are we missing now? We have the cells, we have population, we have connections. What are we missing to make this spike? Input. Mm -hmm. yeah. Stimulation. OK. Some stimulation. OK, so let's go to the stimulation sources. And uh, so I mentioned we're, we have this divided into things, the stimulations, the sources of stimulation, and the targets of those stimulators. So this is the way that it's specified in many standard languages. So you might want to create a current injection and then specify which cells you want to target with that current injection or a source of spike generator and then target different cells. So that's why there are separate things. First, you define the source of stimulation. For example, here we click on plus, create new stimulation source. We can call this I clamp. Oh, I clamp one, okay, current clamp one. We select here in the second field that we want it to be a current injection, I clamp. And here we see the three parameters of the current clamp that we are familiar already with. And we're going to select, um, do, 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 let's see the values. Delay is going to be 20, 20 milliseconds. The duration is going to be 5 milliseconds. And the amplitude is going to be 0, oh, 0 0.5. Oh, 0 0.5. OK. So again, current clamp called I clamp 1. 20 delay, 20 milliseconds delay, 5 milliseconds duration, 0 0.5 amplitude, nano amps. And now we go to stimulation targets, the next panel. We create a new stimulation target. And this says, uh, what is the name of this uh, target? So what we want to do is provide this current injection to one of the cells. Uh, that, that cell is going to trigger a spike. And because we have a local connectivity rule is going to trigger spikes on other cells. So how do we do that? We can just call this I clamp one. This is an arbitrary name to cell zero, for example. We're going to connect it to the cell that has the global ID zero. Again, you could just call it John, but this is to for illustration purposes. So second field, source of stimulation. We want to use the eye clamp that we just created. So we click on it. Uh, we want to target the, uh, the dendrite. 
as we did in other examples. So we type here dendrite. And we want to target the location 1.0. So we're going to provide a current injection to the end of the uh, dendrite. And that's going to travel down the dendrite to the soma, trigger a spike, and connect to other cells. Okay, so I clamp to the dendrite location one. What conditions? So we want to place this only on one of the cells. So we don't want a current injection for all the populations, for all the cell types or specific locations, but we want to go at the bottom here where it says add new target cell global indices. So here we can just type zero, and this means we're going to target cell number zero. We click on the plus, and that gets added to the list. OK, and now we just need to uh, set up what we want to record. So as you remember, we have to record the traces. So we want to record the voltage for, from the SOMA, for example. So we can go to configuration. Do we have to, um, so when we specified cell zero, do we have to say what like cell type or population we're indexing from? No, no, because cell zero is uh, already a unique descriptor. So there's only one cell zero. So you don't need to specify anything else. OK. so. So we go to configuration, we will see several sub panels here of things we can do. So something you can do is change the duration of the simulation, for example. In this case, because it's a simple thing, we can change it from one second to 200 milliseconds. Again, in configuration, duration, change to 200. And then click on the second panel here, which says record. So we want to um, record from cell, for example, number 0. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so in the first, the first field here is the, the names of the cells you want to record from. You can specify a population. You can specify a, a cell ID as before. In this case, we only want to record from one cell, which is the cell number 0. So we can type here 0, click the plus. And here in the second one, we want to say what uh, trace we want to record. So here we have to write actually the format in a specific uh, dictionary structure uh, that is similar to how you're going to write it in NetBank. So you can, uh, when you hover over it, you will actually get uh, pop-ups uh, telling you the standard way to write it. So you can say. Uh, the soma. Sorry, actually, this is simpler than it says there. So you can write just the soma uh, sec soma location 0 0.5 bar b. I believe this is should work. So you specify the name of the trace, voltage in the soma. You open a kind of dictionary. And you don't really need to use these quotes or brackets. It's set up so that this still works. Yeah. So again, I'm going to type it again. So B soma, open bracket. You specify the section. It's going to be the soma. The location is going to be 0 0.5. And the variable is going to be the voltage. You don't need to set the underscore ref or anything like that. It's just a simple dictionary. You don't need to use quotes. Again, just specify section, soma, location, 0 0.5, variable, voltage. Sec, loc, and where will be case sensitive? Yes. OK, so if we've done everything kind of right, we should be able to go now to create a network here at the top again. And 
haven't right now we just have the network instance we haven't run the simulation so to run the simulation we have to click the little rocket at the top right there's a little rocket that says simulate the network you can click on that okay so something seemed to work so now we have here on the left hand side we should have more of the plots available so for example we have one that says cell traces okay fantastic so we see a spike okay so we see at time 20 we get a spike in the uh, cell zero because we provided this current injection let's look at the raster plot The raster plot is not looking good. Um, excuse me, may I ask a question? Yes. yes. Uh, when I try to trace the record, it tells me in correct format, and it seems that it tries to uh, convert V soma. Uh, just the letter V is small instead of large, so it converts and i have windows system okay. uh, could it be that it doesn't work so yeah you can try to remove that one and just write it again in the same structure so the v for variable should be a small v uh i mean the v soma the name for this trace uh, and it seems that it tries to automatically convert it to lower case. When okay, it to... doesn't matter. So the, the name is not important. It's like an arbitrary name, so you can use whatever you want. Okay, I'll try again. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm seeing that we didn't really get spikes. I'm not sure exactly if there is an issue with some of the parameters we put in. But I'm just going to try to change something here. I'm going to make the probability of connection uh, 1.0 so that all cells are connected to all, just in case this is like a random effect and the one cell that got input didn't really get connected. And I'm going to try running again. I'm going to simulate with the rocket here and see if we get something for the raster plot. Hmm, and the raster plot is not showing. And we still get a spike. Hmm. So something we can do is, because this is the tutorial one, if you get some issues like this that it's not behaving as expected. Ah, some people are saying that it shows multiple uh, spikes for them. Yeah, I received uh, multiple spikes online. OK, so I probably did something wrong. So because I did something wrong, this is a good example. You can just go to File, New, delete everything, and just load from the tutorials the completed experiment, the completed tutorial. So if you go to Tutorials, Tutorial 1, that should have all the parameters in the right, uh, with the right values. And you should be able to run and get the, the proper results. Tutorials, now it's blank. So first, usually it's better to go to File New to make a fresh new uh, uh, GUI, and then click Tutorials, Tutorial 1, Simple Cell Network. So this will have exactly the same things that we're looking at, the population, stimulation, and so on. So if I now create the network and run the simulation with the rocket, Hopefully, I should see some spikes. Yay. OK, so and we actually, in the default tutorial, we recorded from two places. We recorded from the dendrite and from the soma. Okay, so you see uh, the voltage traces, and you see this raster plot. Did anyone have any other issues not working? If it's not working, try the loading from the tutorial. 
yeah, I'm having a problem. I uh, loaded it from the tutorial, but I'm still not seeing any of the extra graphics except the first three. Did you click on the rocket here at the top to simulate? Yeah. Uh, um, okay, there we go. Okay. Uh, uh, so another thing you can get is this, uh, the histogram. Uh, so you can show this a histogram of the spike times that you can show on top of the rusted plot. I'm also having, so I just refreshed my GUI and tried to load the tutorial. And it, even loading the tutorial, I've got an error now. Uh, um, what error? Attribute error, params. Uh, can you try the file new just to make sure you delete anything uh, from yeah. before? Yeah, maybe that's what the problem was. Okay, so I think we're going to end here this first tutorial, and Joe is going to take over with a couple uh, other tutorials. Tutorial one, yeah, uh, yes. one, quick, one quick question. How did you get all the plots uh, side by side like this? Oh, yeah, so I didn't explain that. So this is something called flex layout. So you can drag and drop the plots, and they will sort of accommodate to different views. So it allows you to like a very flexible layout that you can arrange as as you want. Oh, I see. Okay, thank you. So just drag and drop on the name of the plot, and you can put it in different places. You can also zoom in and out using this window, I believe. Uh, yes, so if you, you can zoom out. Uh, so the each of the plots has some icons on the right, and if you click on the on the magnifying glass, you can zoom in and out. In theory, yes. You can. Yeah, there's a bunch of things you can do with the plots. Okay, so I'm gonna. Pass it on to Joe. He can also answer any questions you have. And I'll be also available on Slack and here to help you guys. Uh, so thank you so much. Hello, everyone. All right, so if you want to stop presenting, I'll show my screen. I had a quick question uh, about this also. Um, so I know I asked earlier about uh, the positions for the neurons. They seem to be random, but they're random with like specific patterns. So we're all in the same, we all have the same positions for these 40 neurons. Um, is that also the same with um, when we're making the connections? I think we did 10%. Um, are those for us at this point, all the same 10% like connections or? Yes, uh, we use random seeds because we want everything to be reproducible. So right now the random seeds are set the same for all of us. Mm -hmm. So it's random for us, but we all end up with the exact same thing. If you change the seeds, then you'll get uh, a different output. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I'm gonna walk you through uh, tutorial two on the GUI. Um, Again, if you want to do file new uh, before starting this, that'll clear the kernel uh, and make sure we're starting from a blank slate. <clears throat> and again, tutorial two, uh, you can load it here if you have problems uh, during, the, during this. Uh, and the whole point of uh, this tutorial is to show how you can uh, take local files and cell models and things and upload them uh, to your GUI workspace and then use them in the GUI. Um, so initially to get them into the workspace, you want to go to file workspace upload and, uh, and that'll allow you to choose a file to upload into your cloud workspace. Uh, for now, we are going to use uh, cell models that are already in the workspace. They're just included by default by us. Um, and so we are going to, um, actually we're going to, in our cell types tab here, we're going to create a new cell. Uh, instead of empty or HH, we are going to import the cell template from file. So go ahead and click on import cell template from file. 
Uh, and let's just call this first one PYR. Uh, yeah, the names don't really matter, but I'll try to match the tutorial as much as possible. Uh, and the absolute path to the file is going to be here. So you click on uh, absolute path to file, the little folder here uh, pops up this guy. And if we ex uh, expand, oh no, excuse me, they're in cells. Anything that you put into uploads will show up in this uploads directory, but the cells that we have uh, preloaded are under this cells directory. Um, so yeah, we're gonna load this uh, pyramidal track cell. It's originally from a Hoke file, as you can see, and it's, uh, it's a morphologically detailed um, uh, cell with a lot of mechanisms inside it. And we're probably going to have to point to the mod file. Saul, do you know, do we have to point to the mod files here? Or does it find them automatically? I believe you don't need because they're already compiled. But if you Perfect. do, it doesn't trigger an error. But yeah. Okay. So yeah, if we, if we had our own mod files uh, uploaded as well, then we'd have to specify the path to those. Um, and if we wanted to compile them for the GUI, we'd have to check this box here. But let's just, uh, you know, ooh, we did have a problem. Uh, hook object has no attribute blank. Can you go back? Yeah. So new cell type, import it from file. Uh, PYR, absolute path to file is in the cells. And the PT cell dot hook, select. You have to select the cell template class name, which is also PT cell. Ah, thanks. Sorry about that. Yeah. So that's the name of the template inside the PT cell hook file. Yeah. So actually, we could. Uh, yeah. Later, we can look at that PT cell dot hook and see that in it, uh, if it's a hook file, it's going to have a template to create. Uh, you know, any number of cells of that type, and you want to give the template name to NetPine so it can call that. If it's in uh, Python, if the model, the cell model is defined on Python, then you're going to have like a, a class definition of the cell uh, or some way to, to instantiate the cell, and you'll put that name in there. I, I had a question about that. Um, I'm sure this could be answered like very thoroughly and could be a whole separate thing, but do you mind just giving a quick explanation of, I guess, hawk file versus a mod file? I've seen hawk and mod, and then also just like a bunch of other things like sesh. And I don't know what those mean, really. So yeah, uh, uh, the, these are all text files. And uh, a hook file is, um, it's like a Python script is for the Python language. A hook file is for, for hook. Um, so you'll use hook to yeah, lay out your model, uh, define, define all your things. Um, and then mod files are, they have to be compiled by Neuron. So those are like an extra mechanism. So you want to change the sodium uh, channel from the default to something else. You want to modify it a bit. You could go into the mod file uh, and, and modify that a little bit. Then you would have to recompile. And then those, those mod files, those mechanisms are then available to Neuron. So yeah, the mod files are uh, mechanisms and things that need to be compiled by Neuron. And hook files are like scripts that, that Neuron runs. Essentially, Hawk is the, the older interpreter language for Neuron before we could use Python. So now you shouldn't use Hawk for anything. Just use Python. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Try to do everything in Python. I just, uh, Joe, I just missed what you had to put in cell template or class name there. Uh, OK, so that is um, we did a new cell, import cell template from file, and then uh, cell template slash class name. Here, uh, if we look in the Hoke file, we'll see that the template is called capital P, T, capital P, capital T, lowercase cell. Uh, and then, Perfect. yeah, import. And then, yeah, our pyramidal cell shows up. Let's look at the sections. Oh, wow, lots of sections. So we've got a uh, soma section, an axon section, a bunch of basal dendrites. And then we've also got the apical dendrites, which, which go up like a tree. And uh, each one of these sections. It's still showing error in my import. Uh, what, is it, what does it say? Uh, it's the same error which you got. OK. Um, 
So then, let's see here. You may I make sure that, um, let's see here. Okay, so import cell template from file. Okay. Uh, you, so you got the absolute path to file, so you went to cells, PT cell? Uh, cells, yeah, PT cells. Okay, so yeah, so this should be file explorer, cells, PT cell dot hook, select, yeah. so that should show up here. Yeah. And then the cell template class name is the same as the name of the file without the dot, dot hook. Capital P, capital T, lowercase C E L L. No mods, none of that. So and so, Joe, Joe, wait a second. Uh, can you can you type also the cell rule label at the top, and I'll make a screenshot and just share it for people. Yeah. Oh, oh, geez. Nope. <laughs> Lost it. Is that right. cell template class name uh, case sensitive? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You have to be careful with the case sensitivity. Thanks, it worked for me. Oh, good. Okay. So, yeah, if you want to take a screenshot of that, Salva. No. Uh, second. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, post that to. Perfect. Uh, yeah, so now we're exploring our pyramidal cell. So it's got a bunch of sections, soma, axon, dendrite. Let's look at the soma. Uh, it's got the geometry, diameter, length. So this is based on an actual cellular reconstruction. So this is experimental data, uh, probably a little more precision in the decimals than we need. Um, and you can see, because it's morphologically uh, accurate or realistic, it's got these 3D points. Uh, each one specifies an X, Y, Z position. And then the final number is the diameter uh, at that position. Uh, topology, the soma is like the parent, so it doesn't have any topology. Uh, yeah, okay, oh there, here's the mex. So the mex in the soma, we can see we've got uh, several calcium currents, an IH current, potassium currents, sodium currents. So there's a lot of mechanisms that, uh, that go into the cell model. Uh, and now let's uh, import our, so this is a pyramidal cell, an excitatory cell. Let's import uh, an inhibitory cell as well, which we have available already. So we'll go to create new cell type. And again, we'll import uh, the cell template from file. Uh, and this one, what do we call it? INH or something, INT for interneuron. Path the file will be under cells again. And this one is the FS cell, right, Salvo? Yeah. So that FS cell. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's uh, it's also FS cell. We could look in the hope file if we needed to, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Uh, there's no mod files because they're already compiled. So yeah, once we... Yo, uh, sorry. Uh, it's actually, we changed it to have a more detailed cell. So it's actually called SRI. Oh, okay. SRI Hoke is the file name. And the cell name is SRI. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that, guys. So we're going to go to cell, import cell template from file. Yeah. And we're going to call it SRI, or do we still call it oh, INT? You, you can call it INT, but yeah, the cell template is SRI capital letters. Yeah, okay. So yeah, we're going to get this sri.hoke uh, file from the cells and select that. Uh, and you said it's just called sri for the template? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yes. This one has like a detailed morphology, which is nice to visualize. Yeah. So everybody uh, got that. We're going to import that. All right, now we've got our interneuron. Let's look at its sections. Ah, so this uh, this one just has dendrites. It doesn't have an apical dendrite. It's got an axon down here, a bit smaller than the uh, than the um, uh, pyramidal cell, uh, and much simpler in terms of the mechanism. So you've got uh, the soma just has Hodgkin Huxley, and um, dendrites are just passive. Okay, so yeah, so we've got uh, two uh, morphologically detailed cell types. Let's go ahead and create uh, populations out of those. 
So in our populations tab, we click on the plus to add a population. Um, sorry, I have a very simple question. Um, yeah. Did I miss it or is not possible to set the number of uh, segments? Uh, yeah, no, you should be able to set the number of segments in here, right, Salvo? Let's see here. Yes, in the geometry of the section, you should have an N sec. Geometry to the right. In this case, you're using uh, 3D points. Okay. So it might not show up, but we should have N sec. Yeah, N sec should be there. I guess because this is loaded, it doesn't. Thanks. Good question. We'll make sure. I have a question. In the section of axon of the uh, interneuron cell, I notice that uh, it's passive. Um, that's on my and the action, the action of the interneuron. Oh, the axon, excuse me. Yeah, of the interneuron, the okay. mechanism is uh, the mechanism is uh, just passive and oh. I, I i'm confused so the axon is active or passive and the summer is active but yeah the I, axon I, is usually active for but for many simulations we don't really include the axon and we just sometimes include it for purposes of the input resistance of the cell and just for the geometry but we are not really using the axon for any simulation purposes so sometimes it's ah, like a simplified okay. version of the axon. So for, for simpler models, we usually use the voltage at the soma for the spike threshold and everything. Uh, for more complex models, you might want to include an axon that has an, an ax axon initial segment, you know, with a high density of uh, voltage activated sodium channels. And that's really where action potentials tend to start. But this is a very simple model. The axon's passive. The soma is the only thing that's active. And that's where the spikes will be generated. So the event is declared at the SOMA for synaptic purposes. The default section for for triggering uh, the action potential that goes on to other cells is the SOMA. If you want it to be the axon, you'll have to specify the axon, specify it. Uh, can, can we specify that in the GUI solver? Is that programmatic? Yeah, I don't think that feature is in the GUI per se, yeah. but you could specify it through the Jupyter notebook. Yeah, and yeah. So after this, uh, we'll actually, you know, work with uh, work with our own machines and upload stuff, and uh, and we'll work with that. So yeah. So now we've got a pyramidal cell type and an interneuron cell type, and we're going to create uh, populations out of those. So let's call one E for excitatory, and that's going to be the pyramidal neuron. And uh, because these are so uh, morphologically large and detailed, we're just going to use two cells of each. Otherwise, it'll take forever to run. Uh, so yeah, let's add one more population, which we will call I for inhibitory. Cell type will be our interneurons. And again, we'll just do uh, two cells. Uh, before we add anything else, we can, uh, with just the cells and the populations, we can go ahead and take a look. Uh, so we're going to click on create the network up in the upper right. Uh, and yeah, and again, this is uh, a lot of segments, each with a lot of mechanisms. Uh, so it takes a little while uh, to run. Uh, when you're running on your own machine and uh, when you have access to multiple cores, everything gets much, much quicker. So I've got like 16 cores on my computer. I can split it, parallelize it 16 ways, and it becomes almost 16 times faster. Sorry, but the GUI can be downloaded to our local machines or not? Uh, they, we, we don't support uh, personal installations of the GUI right now. Uh, we don't have the time, the staffing, or the funding for that. So right now, it's just online. Uh, but anything you do uh, programmatically on your own computer, you can save a Python script and upload it to the GUI, where you can then visualize it uh, and play around with it. Great. Joe, I have yeah. a question about what we just did in the last step. So yeah. when we were selecting, we were making populations out of cell types. Is it possible to select different or like multiple different cell types within a population? So like if, for example, your cell type was like, one was tonic firing and one was burst firing, but you wanted a population to have both of those types of firing patterns within it. Can you do that? That's an excellent question. And we, I believe it's already possible. It is something on our list to, to make very robust. 
uh, is the ability yes. to have different cell types in one population. Salva, what's the current status? We have uh, that feature, we call it cell diversity. Uh, it's not available through the GUI, but programmatically you can create a population with multiple cell types. So for example, for the human brain project, they have like, I think 10, 20 different variations of the same cell type and it's possible to, to use it. Okay. And the connectivity rule is random in that case or? or the connectivity be... rule depends how you set it, but if you set it for population per population, then it would be random within that population with different types of cells. Is that documentation for cell diversity, is that on the, um, the NetPine website? Yes, uh, yes. it okay. should, I think, or at, at least an example of this. So Joe, the cell is black. Black, ah, okay, let me change the color. <laughs> <laughs> it's an evil neuron. Oh yeah, it sure is. All right, let's go. What's the other one? Yellowish. Let's go bluish. There we go. All right, so you can see we've got uh, two of the pyramidal neurons with their large uh, apical dendrites extending upwards towards the the pia, and their basal dendrites at the bottom. Their axons going down. Uh, you can see that uh, neuron placed them in the same orientation. That's an option you can set. So you can sort of randomize the orientation and things. But uh, yeah, we've got a network of, uh, of two morphologically detailed uh, cells here. Yeah, you uh, want to try the black, the black background? Sorry. Oh, yeah, geez, I forgot about that. I really love the black background so much better. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the GUI guys, they insist that modern user interface design says that it should all be flat colors. But I like the black better. <laughs> Um, so at this point, I could uh, finish this tutorial. We just add a synapse between these cells and run it. Um, but really, you, you did that before in the last one. It's pretty simple. Uh, at this point, I would like to start um, uh, to just developing a model with you guys. So it's one I played around with in the past a little bit, but uh, we're really going to be sort of building it up together right now. Uh, it's going to be a spinal cord uh, model, uh, and it's going to be looking for waves, traveling waves of activity. Uh, so if everybody could go to File, uh, New, to reset our uh, GUIs here. And Salvador, I'm going until 2 now, is that right? or Until 1. Till 1. Okay, so yes. you got half an hour. Great. So yeah, so we'll, uh, it, we're going to build up this model as far as we can on the GUI, and then there's going to be stuff we can't really do. So in a later session, we'll return to this model, uh, programmatically add some stuff, and we can even pull that back into the GUI. And uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, I've always been interested in, I studied the rat spinal cord in grad school. And uh, the way the motor neurons are laid out in the spinal cord, they're such that the, the hip motor neurons are in this long pool above a long pool of knee motor neurons, above a long pool of ankle motor neurons, okay? And so it, it seems that it, you could activate locomotion just by sending a wave of activity through the spinal cord, okay? So a step, first you activate your hip, then you activate your knee, then you activate your ankle. And then uh, for, for the step itself, it's at the reverse order, ankle, knee, hip. So a wave of activity traveling up and down the spinal cord should be able to generate locomotion. So we're gonna build a spinal cord model and uh, start trying to, uh, yeah, get some waves of activity in a spinal cord. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need a cell type. Uh, when building up models, you really want to start very, very simple and add complexity as needed. So we're going to start very, very simply. We're not even going to use a ball and stick HH cell. We're just going to use uh, the basic HH cell, the Hodgkin-Huxley cell, with just the soma. Let's click on that, and we're going to call it MN for motor neuron. Uh, and it's just got the soma, and it's got uh, the Hodgkin-Huxley stuff. So that's perfect. It's a very simple cell model that we can use as a proxy for, for motor neurons for right now. Uh, so in terms of populations, uh, let's go ahead and add three populations. We're going to have the motor neurons of the hip, the motor neurons of the, uh, the knee, and the motor neurons of the ankle. Okay. So let's call... Uh, Population zero, we'll call this hip. 
जो जस्ट द वीडियो फ्रोज फॉर अ मिनट सो दीज आर जस्ट नॉर्मल एच एच मॉडल्स राइट यस यप जस्ट द गो टू द सेल टाइप बेसिक एच एच सेल न्यू सेल एंड जस्ट द बेसिक एच एच सेल राइट थैंक्स यप एंड सो या पॉपुलर ओके सो वी गॉट आवर हिप पॉपुलेशन हियर uh the cell type is going to be mn uh and let's give it 50 cells let's say there actually aren't that many motor neurons in the spinal cord it's a huge bottleneck uh in humans we probably only have a few thousand spinal motor neurons millions of neurons in the spinal cord but only a few thousand motor neurons uh population 1 uh we are going to call me Joe, I'm gonna be posting screenshots of what you do on the Ask Tutor so that they can keep up if they get lost. Yeah, let me mute this channel or something. How do I? Oh, I can mute Slack altogether. <laughs> Pause notifications for an hour. Okay. Um, and I can't see your faces anymore. There we go. Okay, so we've got our hip of motor neurons, our knee of. Uh, no, here's knee. And we got motor neurons, and we want. Yeah, we're just gonna do fifty of each. We're gonna keep this real simple. So fifty hip, fifty knee, and population two. We'll call ankle. It's that. Oh, I got switched to hip for some reason. Ankle. Okay, MN, fifty uh, cells. Okay, is everybody at this point? Okay, so let's uh, let's just go ahead and take a look. It's always fun to uh, constantly look at what's got what we got going on. Oh boy! So there's 150 neurons right there, and that looks nothing like a spinal cord. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna go back and we're gonna look at the spatial distribution of these cells. So let's go on the upper right back to edit, and in our populations, let's click on hip. And over here on the right, we're going to click on spatial distribution. Uh, in NetPine, the default is for the y-axis to be vertical, uh, so we'll use that, and we'll we'll make our spinal cord vertical. Um, so in terms of the x uh, range, uh, we're having absolute ranges on these. In x, let's go from zero to a hundred microns. Uh, same thing in Z, absolute uh, zero to one hundred microns, uh, and then the Y range is where we're going to want to have hip, knee, and ankle sort of um, overlapping a bit, uh, as it does in the real spinal cord. Uh, we're going to do absolute. Uh, the hip is at the top, uh, and typically we we go downwards in in Y. Uh, so I'm going to have the minimum here. Uh, Oh, no. So we want the maximum here to be zero. I could build it vertically. I'm just going to build it vertically for for simplicity's sake. So we'll say the uh, the minimum is going to be at zero, and the maximum we're going to put at uh, let's say 500 microns. So zero to 100 in X and Z, and zero to 500 in Y for this hip one. Okay, it's not in good. In the knee, let's look at the spatial distribution and the X again, all absolute, zero to a hundred. The Z absolute, zero to one hundred. Uh, and the Y range now, the hip went from zero to five hundred. Uh, let's overlap just halfway on this, right? So we'll go. The minimum will be two fifty, and the maximum will be seven fifty in Y. Okay, so in the knee, two fifty to seven fifty in the Y, zero to one hundred in X and Z. So nod your head if you're ready. All right. So for ankle, uh, we're going to do the same thing: spatial distribution X, zero to one, one hundred, not one hundred, one hundred. Z, we're going to do zero to one hundred. And why now we want to overlap this with the knee that went two fifty to seven fifty. So this we want to go five hundred to one thousand. Okay, so zero to one hundred in X and Z, and in this ankle five hundred to one thousand in Y. Joe, why do you need the overlapping? 
Uh, that's that's well, that's the way it works. That's the way you see it in the spinal cord. So it wraps cats all the way up to us. Our hip motor neurons are this long pool overlapping the knee motor neurons, overlapping the ankle motor neurons. So this is reality. So we're just modeling, you know, you know, a very a toy model of reality. Okay, so we've got our spatial distribution now. So let's click uh, create network again. Ah, now this looks more like a spinal cord. Uh, let's go into the colors and we'll do the hip. Um, red is fine. Uh, and then in the uh, down here to the knee. Oop, what happened? There's the knee. Let's do uh, bluish, I guess. Do that. Give me one sec here. All right, hip, hip, knee. Blue. There we go. I don't know, it's not changing the color right now. Uh, let's try randomizing them all. Okay, that worked. But I want to see them by population so we can see the overlap. So hip, let's make reddish. Knee. Joe, there is only one knee cell, so there might be an issue with the knee. Oh, that's my problem. Thank you, Salva. <laughs> going crazy here. Uh, okay, so let's go back to edit. We got a problem here. Uh, it was the knee you said? Yeah. Ah, number of cells, 50. I guess we missed that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> that forever. Uh, I've always had knee problems. <laughs> Okay, so now um, let's uh, do hip. Uh, the reddish is fine. Down to the knee. Uh, I think that you didn't define the cell type in me. Oh, uh, it might have picked it up. It might not have. Okay, thank you. All right, let me go through this very carefully here. Back to edit. Let's look at ankle. We've got MN and we've got 50 cells. In knee, we've got MN, oh, cell type, MN and 50 cells. In hip, we've got MN and 50 cells. Okay, now create network. And hip, uh, red is fine. I don't know if this is, like anyone else is having this. I When I hit create network, I don't see anything, but well, looks like I've set everything up. I just get a blank screen. No error. Huh. Um, and you've, uh, well, I will, I will save this afterwards. Sure. Uh, yeah. And that way you can import it like you did, you know, like you can with these other tutorials here. Okay. Um, cool. I don't want to debug everybody's issues right now, I guess. So, because we've only got uh, 20 minutes left here. Sure, sure, sure. Cool. Yeah, but later we can work, we, uh, I can work with you or whatever if we don't get it working. Uh, so we got the knee blue. Let's make the ankle a different color. There's the ankle population, yellowish, or whatever the color. I'm colorblind, so don't uh, ignore me when it comes to talking about color. Here we go. So we can see that our hip uh, overlaps our knee, overlaps our ankle. Uh, we got a nice little uh, start of a spinal cord model here. Um, OK, so let's go back to edit. Um, Okay, and so yeah, the way motor neurons in the spinal cord work is obviously they send out one axon, which travels all the way down to the muscle of interest. So you know the longest uh, motor neuron uh, ever is the uh, you know the the spinal motor neuron that reaches from uh, you know to the big toe of a giraffe. You know what I mean? Essentially, it's going to be a single axon that's meters long. But also, as soon as that axon leaves the, the motor neuron cell body, it immediately starts putting out axon collaterals, okay? So that all its neighbors know exactly what it's doing. Every time the axon spikes, its neighbors know that, hey, this guy spikes, okay? So you've got these axon collaterals that in a, in a small area around each motor neuron um, attach to uh, the other motor neurons. Um, but in order to start building that up, first we have to add a synaptic mechanism, right? So let's uh, add a synapse. Uh, and the neurotransmitter in motor neurons is acetylcholine. So we'll just call it ACH, even though we're not really going to try to model it very well. 
Um, we're going to use the X2 sin. You know, like, again, this is a toy model. Uh, in the future, if we wanted to make this better, we'd go in and, and model an acetylcholine synapse. You know, we'd go in and get uh, motor neuron parameters. But for our purposes right now, this is fine. Uh, pretty standard time constant for this is uh, 0.1, a quick upslope and a one millisecond uh, downslope. And we want it to be excitatory. Uh, so we'll just make that zero. Okay. All right, so now we want to connect our, um, uh, our, our, our spinal cord, the motor neurons in our spinal cord. Um, and we're, we can build up a little bit of complexity in the GUI here, but ultimately to get distance-based connectivity, which is what we really want, we're going to have to go into programmatic. Uh, we can then import back into the GUI, but uh, we'll have to take a step outside of the GUI to, to get that. Um, we're right now, we're just going to explore a little bit of connectivity. Um, so we'll just call it rule zero. Um, wait, I think zero, zero, 005 is pretty good for this model and these synapses. Uh, and let's just give them all about a 10% probability of, of connecting. Um, just a, we'll have a, just a constant uh, connection delay. Um, we should make it a little longer, 10 milliseconds. Uh, obviously, uh, eventually, we're going to want to have our delay uh, be distance-based as well, right? If a neuron is very far away from another neuron, it takes time for the signal to travel. Uh, but we'll, we'll build that up uh, when we get there. The synaptic mechanism is going to be the ACH, the acetylcholine we made. Um, by default, it's going to go to the soma in the middle. Well, just to be safe, let's add soma and let's say 0 0.5 in the middle. Uh, we just want one synaptic contact per connection right now. Again, this is something we might want to make distance-based uh, in the future. But um... Okay, good. So that's... Uh... That's the general connectivity rules. Now we have to set up uh, the presynaptic cells and the postsynaptic cells. So on this first case, uh, we're just gonna do it by cell type because all the cells in there are motor neurons. So we're just gonna go all to all by saying the presynaptic cells are of type MN and the postsynaptic cells are of type MN. Okay, so we've got our synaptic mechanisms and our connectivity. Uh Joe, I think that you didn't press the add button in general in uh, add new postsynaptic neuron section. Um, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. There we go. Thank you very much. Perfect. So on 0 0.5. And the rest of that looks good. Okay. Uh, so now we can, we've got our cells and the connectivity between them. So let's go ahead and create the network so we can, uh, so we can look at that. Uh, unfortunately, right now, we lose the color every time we edit the model. Uh, this will be improved in, in, in future uh, releases. I'm not going to redo it right now. We, we know that the hip, ankle, uh, hip, knee, and ankle are sort of overlapping there. And in the connectivity here, uh, yeah, and these, these graphs are, uh, they're all interactive. So if you hover over uh, one of the neurons, you know, you can see it. I'm going to do a box uh, zoom in here to take a look. I don't see the connectivity actually, but uh, again, you can see the X and Y location of all these cells. Uh, oh, weird. We do have connectivity, so this is our connection strength matrix. Um, and Joe, in the other plot, the the connection, the lines are disabled if there are too many to avoid uh, like running too long. Got it. Well. Okay. Okay. So we're not going to see the lines for the GUI later. We can plot them programmatically and, and see, uh, but we can still see the uh, the connectivity here. Uh, by default, it's at the uh, population level. So this is the presynaptic here and the postsynaptic here, and this is the strength. Uh, now there's random uh, connectivity, but it's all the same. So these all should be about the same. And you can see the range of values is quite small. Point, point, you know, it's basically all right around 0.15. So these are, this is looking pretty good. Um, one other thing that's kind of fun to look at is we're going to go back to edit. Uh, and we are going to modify a plot setting on that connectivity plot. So we can get a little more detail there. So I'm going to click on... Uh, 
you know, over on the left, you can do plot settings or you can, you know, click on the tab at the top also. In plot settings, I'm going to click the plus. And I want to look at the network connectivity plot. Okay, it's called iPlotCon. That is the network connectivity plot. Uh, we want to show all the cells. Um, and right now it was grouped by population. But let's also look at uh, how the connectivity works on a cell by cell basis. Uh, in this case, we're going to want to show the uh, weight uh, between any two cells uh, and order by, we could order it by GID. You know what I mean? That's the ID. So when we created these, we created the hip first. So IDs one through 50 are going to be hip. And then IDs 50 or one, zero through 49 are hip. 50 through 99 are knee. Um, and so if we did it by GID, the populations will be right next to each other. But we can also do it by Y. So, you know, because our, our cells overlap. So let's do it by, by vertical position instead of by population. Uh, so with that, we're going to create network. And we're going to look at the uh, connection spot. Aha, ha, ha. Oh, this is cool. OK, so we got the, the top of here is uh, the top of the spinal cord, the top of the hip. Get down into here, and we're into knee. Get down into here, and we're into ankle. Uh, where it's white, it means there's no connection. And where there's a color, it, you know, it's all the same strength. We didn't random uh, vary the strength at all. So it's all 0 0.005 for each one of these connections. Uh, but we can see right away that there's a problem here because a cell way at the top of the spinal cord has the same probability of connecting to a cell right next to it as it does of connecting to a cell at the very bottom of the spinal cord. And that is not at all uh, biologically plausible. Uh, we want to start uh, getting into some sort of distance-based connectivity. Uh, programmatically, we're going to do that with string functions. But for now, we're going to sort of do a primitive uh, example of this uh, and uh, with uh, population connectivity. Give me one sec. I'm going to actually uh, save this figure. So uh, down here on the bottom uh, of this particular graph, you can see the save. I'm going to click Save. Uh, I'm going to call it Raster uh, Con 1 before I added any real connectivity. Uh, throw that on my desktop. And now, if I click on that, ah, great. Oop. Oh, no. Uh, we had a problem. We're saving it. It was clipping of it. Apparently, it's come back. Uh, but then anyways, uh, yeah, so we want, you know, we want to see connectivity along the central line and not so much extending, uh, vertically through, through here. So the first way we're going to go about that is we got to go back to edit and we're going to look at our connectivity rules again. Okay. So our connectivity rule was all to all, uh, with just a, with a rant, with a probability, a 10% probability. So again, a hip neuron at the top uh, has the same probability of connecting to a neuron next to it as it does to a neuron at the bottom. We can start uh, breaking that down by, um, let's do uh, hip to knee. We'll do a connectivity hip to knee, and we'll do a connectivity, uh, okay, well, actually, we're going to have to do hip to hip first because it puts out axon collaterals that touch everything, so it's got to connect to itself as well. So hip to hip. Uh, 0.05. We'll leave it at uh, 0.1 for now. We'll have to play around with it later, I'm sure. So, 0.5. Good. So, in presynaptic, we would instead of cell type, we want to do um, hip. Uh, I think maybe I have to should delete this one and start a new one because it doesn't want to get rid of that. So, we're going to delete. Uh, that old connectivity we started with and add a new one. And we're going to call this uh, hip the hip. 0 .00, oops, 0 .005. Uh, probability, we'll just keep it at 10%, although it might be small. Yeah, we, we'll have to play around with the connectivity eventually. Uh, connection delay hip to hip, let's go five because they're near each other. 
synaptic mechanism is ACH. Uh, we're going to do it at the soma. We do it at 0 0.5 and one synapse per connection. So uh, this time, instead of cell type, we're going to go to population pre. It's going to be hip. And post is going to be hip as well. Okay, so we've got hip to hip. Let's do uh, hip to knee. Uh, where are we here? We run connectivity general. <coughs> hip to knee, 0 0.005. <coughs> Okay, wait, 0 0.005. Probability will keep 0 0.1. <coughs> Connection delay, hip to knee. Let's make it a little longer, 10 milliseconds, because it's further away. Eventually, we'll plug in nicer things here. Synaptic mechanism is ACH. It's going into the soma at 0 0.5. <coughs> okay, so presynaptic, the population is the hip. And postsynaptic, <coughs> the population is the knee. And <coughs> oh, great. All right, and now um, let's just take a look at this. We're, we're running out of time, but you get the idea. Uh, to do this population to population wise, I would want to do hip to hip, hip to knee, and then I could do hip to ankle with a very low probability. Uh, and then we would want to do knee to knee, knee to hip, knee to ankle, uh, ankle to ankle, uh, ankle to knee, and maybe ankle to hip with a very small uh, probability. Let's look at the connections plots now. Ah, okay. Now we see that um, ah, we need to finish it to see the full thing. Let's go back to edit uh, into our plot settings in this plot con. And we're going to put it back to population. You guys don't have to follow along with this right now if you don't want to. And with population, we want to do the strength, which is sort of a measure of the average weight. Create the network. Uh, look at the connections plot. Okay, now we can see we got the hip to hip in place. We got the hip to knee in place. There's a zero hip to ankle, which is fine. Now we would have to go through and do knee to knee strong, you know, knee to hip, knee to ankle, ankle to ankle, ankle to knee. Okay, so it's a pretty complex way. It would be much nicer if we could just use a distance-based rule with these motor neurons to, to connect them all. doesn't matter which population they're from. Motor neurons are, are indistinguishable. Uh, there's a few different types, but just by looking at one, you can't tell whether it's a hip, knee, or ankle. Um, and so, yeah, we got about five minutes left. Um, so, Joe, sorry, just to mention that in the next tutorial, tutorial three, we're going to see an example of a distance-based connectivity. So, depending on the depth of the target population, the, the strength of the connectivity changes, so you wouldn't have to do population one by one. Oh, say that one more time, Silva. So, we're going to show a distance-dependent connectivity rule, so that for all cell types, the strength of the connection depends on the depth of the postsynaptic cell. Ah, the depth, got so it. Yeah, in your example, you could also use something like that for all the motor neurons and base it on the depth. Yeah. We can put it as an exercise, man. Yeah, great. Uh, yeah, that sounds fun. Okay, so yeah, we're almost at uh, 1 o'clock, and I'm not going to be able to do anything else interesting in a couple minutes. So yeah, I will um, finish uh, this connectivity by population and then share that with you guys so you can play with that. Um, and in the meantime, I think we're going to take a short break and then, oh no, we got uh, lunch. Ooh, thank goodness, I'm hungry. Uh, lunch and then Salvador is going to come back uh, with GUI tutorial three and uh, distance and stuff. Um, Joe, um, I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, so when you define the uh, connection probability, is that calculated in the same way, like uh, randomly? Uh, at this works for the location of the neurons. So, yeah, and this exactly. means, and this means that anytime I create my network, always the same cells will be connected. If you create the same network, always the same cells will be created, unless you change the random seed. 
Um, okay. I think that's in configuration. Is that right, Salva? So, so, so for example, cell A yes. would be always connected with cell B unless I change either the seats or the, I don't know, the identity of the cells or whatsoever. Yeah, if you okay. change your model a bit, the randomness will be a little bit different. And so it'll be, you know, you'll get something slightly different. But if you do the exact same model every time, even though it's random, it's, it just starts with the same random seats. You get the same output. Okay, thanks. You have the seats there on the on the left, which is add randomizer seats. You have con ah, one, spin one, lock one. So yeah, if we change this, you know, two, two, three, or whatever, any random numbers, it will be a different uh, network that's created. Thanks. All right. Anything else? Any other questions? Uh, can you import uh, an archive with all connectivities, or you must do one by one, like hip to hip? We must write all. Or can we? No, nope, you can import an entire simulation. So yeah, so the usually with larger simulations, we break them into multiple files. So you got a file for the net params, a file for the sim config, and a file for the the running, and uh, yeah, and then mod files and stuff. You can zip all that and upload it uh, to the workspace. Go to workspace uh, upload, and it'll unzip it and put it into uh, your cloud directory. So it's yeah, it's pretty slick. All right, let's take lunch. OK, thank you. We'll see you all at 2. See you guys at 2. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.